Now, now we're gonna we're gonna uh, turn it back over for questions. Do y'all have any questions at us? You have a question? Yes, ma'am. How do you? What did she say? How do we sit on a horse? Come on, come on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm gonna get this question. I'm gonna get this question. A forest. Oh, oh, now I got it. She asked the question, how do you rebuild a forest? And Baxter out there just stick them little trees in the ground and put some dirt on. Now, hey, uh, a forest take a long time to rebuild, baby. That's the only thing I have, only answer I have for you. Because trees, take about, what, 20 years to mature, to get big? Unless it's a plum tree or apple tree. Any other question? Any other question before we turn it over? Where? Yes, sir. How long ago was Civil War? Civil War ended in Texas in 1865, but when did it end everywhere else? That's why, come on, you, come on, you uh, people of color ought to know that's why we eat barbecue on 19th of June to celebrate. <laughs> Huh? Y'all look, y'all, y'all tell him. They, it was almost two years, it was almost two years before, t- after, after the Civil War, that Texas got the word that we were free. The last battle, last battle of the Civil War fought right here in Texas. So you add it up, 1865. You add it up, you figure that, all right? Huh? One more question, go ahead. How did I make what? How did I make those flu? You got to talk to the Indian. I don't know nothing about it. I, I, I couldn't even carry a tune in, in, in this hat right here because it got a hole in it. Uh, uh, any other questions before we go? Way back there, one more. Yes, yes, sir. The ninth and the 10th Cavalry is still serving, but not as a, a segregated unit. Uh, I believe I believe the ninth is in the fort, and the tenth is in the first cavern at Fort Hood, Texas. Bet you. Yeah. No other question, ma'am. Run it. Oh, you got another question? Huh? Uh, how you use the restroom? <laughs> Go behind a tree or your horse. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, John. Oh, oh, come on. That's getting outrageous there. Come on. Last question. <laughs> what well, buffalo soldier raised by buffalo? No, sir. No, sir. I'll get with you after the I'll get with you after the segment, okay? I I I'll give you some history. All right, everybody, uh, what's going to happen now is we're going to have a special question and answer um, program uh, through the distance learning program, T-E, uh, TENT, and we will be taking some questions through uh, from students uh, across the state of Texas that are not here today. Okay, Sergeant Padilla, I'll help you out with that. Let's go to Fort Bend ISD McAuliffe Middle School. Do you have an ancestor who was a Buffalo soldier? They're going to have to repeat that when I couldn't make it out. Do you have an ancestor who was a Buffalo soldier? Do I have an ancestor that was a Buffalo soldier? At this point in time, I'm going to have to tell you no. But I have to do more research, which I encourage everybody else out here to do as well, to find out who your ancestors were. Uh, if you dig down your family tree long enough, I'm pretty sure you had somebody who 
was alive in that time period here in Texas, and you may have ties to Buffalo Soldiers. But as for me, no, I do not. Okay, McCall, there was a, a list of questions that you guys had submitted, and um, when I sent the questions back out last week, uh, there was one that was highlighted in yellow. Do y'all have that one that you wanted to ask? What war or wars did the Buffalo Soldiers participate in? Again, the Buffalo Soldiers were formed in that act of Congress in 1866, which means the first war they participated in would have been the American Indian Wars. They would have also served in the Spanish American Wars. They would have served in World War I and then World War II. After World War II, those all black units were no longer segregated, so there wouldn't have been an all black Buffalo Soldier unit at that point. Thank you. Okay, Zavala Junior High, let's ask your first question. Hi, my name is Lindsay Wiley from Zavala Junior High, and this is question number one. Henry Ossian Flipper was dismissed from the Army in 1882. He was wrongfully convicted of conduct unbecoming an officer. What was the specific act that led to his dismissal? You want to take this one, or you want me to I take it? I can't even hear it. You know, I can't hear, I can't see. That's why I'm telling all you young folks. He, um, he would have been accused of embezzling money, but proven innocent. Uh, he was actually found guilty of conduct unbecoming an officer. Uh, so those would have been his charges, which conduct unbecoming an officer was a pretty vague term uh, used back then during that time period. Thanks, Zavala. Okay, Bastrop Blue Bonnet Elementary, go ahead and ask your first question. Hi, my name is Ashley, and this is my question. How did the men who wanted to be Buffalo Soldiers find out they were able to fight in the war? Good question. Uh, the way the Buffalo Soldiers, or the, the black men at that time found out they were able to serve in the military and become a Buffalo Soldier, or later get that term, was through the same methods that the military uses today, recruitment, flyers, posters. Uh, there was advertisement out there letting these black men know they now had the opportunity to be in the military. And for the ones who sought an education or a, a better uh, 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 economical stand in, in life by making money, they took that opportunity and enlisted into the military. Thanks, Bastrop. Okay, we'll go back to Fort Bend. Um, even though these other questions weren't highlighted this round, um, I do recognize some of these from the last session, so I know they'll be able to answer them. So uh, Fort Bend, uh, go ahead and ask your, your next question. What was the biggest problem that the Buffalo soldiers faced at, on the frontier? What was the biggest problems that the Buffalo Soldiers faced out on the frontier? Um, there would have been several problems, um, the same as with the settlers or the same that you might face today. Uh, one, food wasn't always good. There were bad rations which led to a lot of disease and people getting sick and dying. Uh, you had bad supplies, which was universal, not just to the black soldiers, but to the white soldiers in general. Um, you would have had hostile situations or entrapments where you had to maneuver out of it. Or like I described earlier, the Battle of Fort Lancaster, you're faced against 900 people and there's 70 to 100 of you. Those are some pretty challenging odds at that point. So those are just some of the things they would have faced back then. Good question. Thank you, Fort Ben. Okay, Zavala Junior High, your next question. Brianna Jordy, Zavala Junior High. After all black units, such as the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, earned respect in the Civil War, why did the United States Army continue to segregate black and white troops? That was a long one. Um, the Army still chose to segregate 
just due to the views of, of racism and segregation in general, um, even though these black men fought in the Civil War, there were still a lot of prejudiced people out who did not, again, want to serve with the black troops. There were only a few good white officers who served, who might have already served with the black troops during the Civil War or beforehand that knew of their fighting capability, that knew that these were good men, and that also knew that no matter what your color was, at the end of the day, you were all dirty blue. You were all fighting for the U.S. Army. I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Zavala. Okay, Bastrop, Blue Bonnet, go to your next question. Uh, I'm Chloe Day, and my question is, where did the Buffalo Soldiers get their weapons? Where did the Buffalo Soldiers get their weapons from? Uh, the soldiers were issued their supplies, weapons, and clothing from the U.S. military through the quartermaster. Um, when we were issued weapons, again, the, the cavalry would have had a, a carbine, which is a short rifle, uh, because they rode horses and they had to be able to maneuver side to side uh, and not hit the horse in the head. Uh, the infantry soldiers were issued a, a longer rifle because they had to shoot long distance. Now when, bear with me, the soldiers also had to improvise. Hold that for me, Lieutenant. Improvising might have called for something like this as well. And this was issued by the Army or they would have bought it. And as y'all can see, this is just a simple mirror. But back then, this could have been the first cell phone that a soldier used, and text messaging in particular. If, if we were in a hostile situation where we were outnumbered, and say I was isolated by myself and my troops were down the range some, I didn't want to yell out to anybody because I'd pretty much give my position away. So what I would do is take some of the supplies that the military would give me, like a mirror, and make signals to these guys. And by making those signals, it was just like sending out a text message. We had Morse code. They knew what I was flashing them, so they knew what the situation was, whether to run or whether to stay low. So again, to answer it, the military supplied our, our equipment, our uniform, our guns, our food, and our shelters. And that's how the Buffalo Soldiers were equipped. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thanks, Bastrop. OK, when I go back to Fort Bend, I want to uh, clarify something. Uh, that there must have been some miscommunication on the questions that were submitted because the ones y'all are asking are different from what are on our sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you ask a question. Just be prepared. Uh, the, the Buffalo Soldiers presenters were uh, researching all these questions if they needed to. So it's possible, you know, they may not have the answer for yours. So go ahead and try and let's see if they've got it. McCall at the middle. Well, stand up, stand up. What was the main duty of the Buffalo Soldiers? If, if I heard right, you asked what was the main duty of a Buffalo Soldier. Uh, a Buffalo Soldier's duties, the life of a soldier, consisted of constructing, uh, constructing wagon tra uh, trails so that we had military supply trails to travel on, uh, mapping out the land in general on top of that water supplies, because when you were out on campaign, there was no vending machine to serve you up a Coke or a bottle of water, so you had to make sure that you knew where your next water supply was going to come from. We also had the responsibility of uh, reconstructing the forts because, again, after the Civil War, a lot of these forts were damaged. So now that we were settling in these forts again as settlement moved west, we had to rebuild them for their integrity purposes. Uh, another responsibility or duty of the soldier was uh, the protection of the settlers, whether it was the Chinese or Irish immigrants building the railroad, uh, down to just the townspeople and escort duty. Um, a lot of the times you had uh, outlaws and bandits who were trying to take the mail or, or overrun the stagecoach, and the cavalry members would be there to protect that. Good question. Thank you, Fort Ben. Okay, Zavala Junior High, back to you. Thank you. Hey, the land from Savannah, Junior High. Were black cavalry members paid the same and given the same supplies and equipment as white cavalry members? Were black soldiers paid the same and given the same supplies as white soldiers? Pay was determined on your rank. Um, if you were a new enlistee to the military, you made up to about $13 a month. The more responsibility that you took on, the better you could read and write orders. They would give you. They would put you up in rank. You would move from a private to a sergeant, or like this officer here, 
you would make anywhere from $15 a month at that point to $100 a month. It all pretty much depended on you as the person. If you put in the hard work, time, and effort, you were moved up in rank and you were then paid better. Um, as far as supplies, everybody for the most part had bad supplies. Uh, it's not like today's modern military where you have all these new weapons, electronic weapons. We had a lot of weapons that were still being used from the Civil War. So again, you had to improvise. You had to make do with what you had. Uh, with the soldiers, again, whether you were cavalry or infantry, you were issued a standard carbine or, or a long rifle. Thank you, Blue Bonnet Elementary. Okay, or excuse me, Zavala. Okay, um, let's go to Blue Bonnet Elementary now. Hello, my name is Becca, and this is my question. Who started the Buffalo Soldiers, and who is in charge? Good question. Who started the Buffalo Soldiers? Um, like I explained earlier in the presentation, the act to initiate the, the six regiments was passed by Congress in 1866. Uh, Congress would have signed the bill to make the 9th Cavalry, 10th Cavalry, 38th and 39th Infantry, 40th and 41st Infantry to later be consolidated down to the 24th and 25th Infantry. Of those Buffalo Soldier regiments, they were led mostly by white officers uh, because of the fact they uh, had more literacy. They were able to read and write orders. And the young troopers coming in did not have the education or the ability to read. Good question. Thank you, Bastrop. OK, uh, Fort Ben, we'll try another one with you. I'm rejoiced. What state did the ninth regiment protect? States. States. You're gonna have to repeat that one. What states did the ninth regiment protect? Well, uh, the history we focus on of the ninth would have been Texas. They would have been here in Texas, but they would have gone as far up as what was it, North Dakota? So they would have went from Texas as far up to North Dakota. And then again, settlement was moving from the east because those were the original colonies and they were moving west at that point. Good question. Thank you, Fort Ben. OK, Zavala Junior High, what's your last question? This is Brian Hudson from Zavala Junior High. What is considered the most important Indian campaign the Buffalo Soldiers first participated in? And thank you for what is considered the most important battle or campaign the Buffalo Soldiers participated in? That one could be up, uh, open to interpretation. Uh, the Battle of Fort Lancaster was a significant battle because, again, it was the first battle that these uh, uh, Buffalo Soldier units or black regiments were engaged in. Um, and, and being titled an experiment, this was their first opportunity to to prove themselves that they can be a good, effective combat soldier. Um, another very important battle would have been the Red River Wars. Um, so again, that question is up for interpretation. It all depends on how you view importance and, and what you're looking for within that answer. But that's a very good question. Okay, Sergeant Padilla, that was the last of the questions, and I'm going to end it with that one that you ended with on the very last session, because I thought that was an awesome answer that you, pres uh, you gave to us, and that was, how did you go about researching your presentation? In researching the presentation, um, a four-letter word, R-E-A-D, read. Um, just as you guys are in school now, it's important to read because the more you read, the more you actually learn. The same as the soldiers. Many of the soldiers jumped into the military and took that opportunity, uh, one, for education. You had some who just wanted the education, uh, two, for the education and, and, the, and the pay advancement. And from what these guys learned back then still carries over to all of you guys in here today and all of you guys out there. The more you read, the more you learn, the better off you will be in life, the better of an opportunity you will have to make good money and more money than somebody who is not taking that time out to read. Research, read, I don't care if it's a book, a magazine, or an internet article. 
you should always read something every single day. Like Sergeant Williams said earlier, a person who can read and doesn't read is no better off than a person who's not, who doesn't know how to read. Thank you so much, and we appreciate you sharing your expertise with kids all across the state. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am so pleased that you have been such a nice and receptive audience. I want to thank you and your teachers for coming on behalf of the George uh, the well, those of us here at the George Bush Museum and Library and the Barbara Bush Literacy Guild and Storytellers Guild. So we're just so pleased that you're here. We have a group, uh, two groups, who need to be dismissed early, so please, if the rest of you will remain seated because these are little kids, and those of you who are older, it's no fair running down a kid.